What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use the Cell Fracture add-on in order to break things inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so let's say inside of Blender that you wanted to take some objects and break them up into little pieces so that you could either use physics simulations or just show them as uh, like little broken parts or things like that. Well, the problem is going in and doing that manually can be really kind of painful, right? You'd have to do a whole bunch of like knife cuts and other things like that. We don't really want to do that. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use an add-on that's built into Blender called the Cell Flat Fracture add-on. So if we go up to edit, preferences and you just do a search for cell fracture that's actually a built-in add-on that you can enable and so once you do that what we can do is we can take that and we can use it to break objects up procedurally so the way that that works is you want to select the object that you're going to break up go into object and under quick effects there's an option for cell fracture and so when you click on cell fracture that's going to pop up this menu that gives you a lot of different options for different things you can do to break your object up I don't want to get super far into this. Um, there's some complex things in here that we're not going to worry about for right now. But let's say, for example, right now that we've got this set where the point source is its own particles, and we just click on OK. So notice what that did is that came in here and that broke up this object into different objects, right? So if I move this out, you can see how this basically split this up into like eight different cubes, which isn't very interesting. It's not exactly what we're looking for, but you can see that it does that. It breaks this up into different cubes and then it also leaves your original cube that was in there as well. So you can see I can move that original cube out of the way. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo this and we're gonna use one of the functions in order to make this a little more interesting. So let's go back into object. We're gonna go to quick effects, cell fracture and this time we want to add some noise to this so let's add a value of maybe like 0.5 or yeah 0.5 is going to work just fine and then we're going to come in here we're going to click on ok well now notice what that did is that broke this up into different pieces that have a little bit more noise applied to them and what that means is that means that these look a little bit more realistic because when things break they tend to break kind of randomly so the higher your noise so if i undo this run it again, the more random the different particles that are broken up here are going to be. And so notice how this is going to work the same way with other shapes as well. So let's say I was to take this cylinder and do this. So if we were to leave our noise at zero and set our source limit to 100 and click on OK, notice what that's going to do is that's just going to break this up into very uniform pieces, right? Like pieces of a pie or something like that. But if you were to instead do that whole thing and turn your noise up, then you're going to get a lot more randomization in here. So you've got these different cells fractured inside your object. Let's say we want more pieces in our object. Well, probably the best way to do that is going to be to tab in here and add some geometric detail. So the easiest way to do that on simple shapes is just going to be to tab into edit mode, right click and click on the button for subdivide. And then you can adjust the number of subdivisions using this slider right here. But the more cuts that you add on an object, the more detail you're going to get. So now if I was to run self fracture on this, so we'll leave it at self fracture and I'm going to go ahead and leave this on 100 which is what we had in there before, and click on OK. Notice how I'm gonna get more pieces in here than I did before. So remember my original cube, which only had, it didn't have any subdivisions on it. I get these bigger pieces right here. With this one, there's a lot of smaller pieces in here instead. And so now let's talk a little bit about how we could use this. Um, because usually what you're gonna do is you're gonna use physics settings in order to um, use your cell fracture object. So you need to understand a little bit about physics. I'm not gonna get too far into that. I'll just give you what you need in order to create these animations. So right now, what I wanna do is I wanna take this sphere and I wanna cell fracture it. So I'm just gonna go to object, quick effects, cell fracture. And noise is at one, we're gonna click on okay. So that's gonna create a cell fracture of this sphere right here. And then we can also take the sphere, we can just move it out of the way. So the original sphere, like this. So what you've got is you've got a bunch of different pieces in here, right? And at its simplest, what you wanna do is you wanna apply physics settings to this so that when you click the play button, Blender's gonna simulate something happening. 
So in this situation, for example, what we'd want to do, and I'm going to jump into wireframe mode real quick just to make sure I'm picking everything up. But what we want to do is the easiest way to do this is just going to be to go to object and add rigid body. So in this case, we want to add active, right? So object, rigid body, add active. Well, now if I click play, this is just going to fall out of my scene, right? It's going to simulate this with physics, but because there's nothing for it to interact with, it's just going to fall. So what we want to do is first I'm going to move this up, but then I'm going to add a plane and move it over and I'm going to give that physics over in the physics tab right here. We just want to call it a rigid body and we want to set this one as passive. What that means is that means it's going to sit in your scene and objects can interact with it, but it's not going to do anything other than be there for it to interact with. So now if I click the play button, notice what's happening is my sphere falls down. It kind of crashes into the ground, but all the parts and pieces now kind of shatter. So this can be really useful for setting things shattering when there's impacts or other things like that. So that's one way to do this. And so another way to do this is to set your physics so that they don't do anything until something else interacts with your object. So for example, if I take this object and break it up again, so quick effects, cell fracture, okay. It's gonna give me my cells right here. And let's go ahead and move this sphere out of the way again. But what I wanna do now is I wanna set this up where these are all rigid objects, but they don't do anything until something else interacts with this. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you the other way to add the rigid body um, stuff into this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select one of these. Then I'm gonna hold the shift key and drag a box. That's gonna allow me to select everything in here. And then I'm gonna add rigid body physics to this object right here. Well, notice how now if I click play, only one of those objects got physics applied to it, right? You can see it fall out of the scene. So what we want to do is we want to go to object and under rigid body, we want to select the option for copy from active. Basically what that means is that's going to take the physics settings of the one object that's in here and copy it to the other objects that we have selected. So now if I click play, the whole thing's going to fall out of my scene right? But we still don't quite have what we want. So the first thing is we don't want this to fall out of our scene when it first starts. So what we want to do is inside of our physics settings, we want to go to our dynamics and we want to check the box for deactivation. We want to check the box for start deactivated. Remember to go into object, rigid body, copy from active to apply this to all these objects. Well, now if I click on play, notice how this is just going to sit here until something interacts with it. So what we want to do now is we want to set something that's going to, um, let's say, fall through this object. So I'm going to, we'll just extend this out a little bit. And so nothing's happening right now, but I want to add a second object. And let's say we were to just add another cube. So shift A, mesh, cube. I'm going to scale this down. We just want to make sure it's right above our object, which it is. We'll move it down a little bit. But let's say we wanted to assume this was going to fall through our object and shatter it. Well, what we would want to do is we would want to go in here and set this as a rigid body and just leave it as active right here. And then we can just click the play button. When we click the play button, whoops, we want to go ahead and apply our rotation and scale here. Well, now when we click the play button like this, this is going to fall down. And as soon as it touches this object, the physics inside of this object are going to start, right? Because something's interacting with it. So if I click the play button and let it fall, notice how this is kind of shattering that object when it falls down. So there's a lot of interesting things you could do here. And so now you've got an object over here that's going to interact as soon as something touches it. And so let's say that we wanted to set something a little bit more dynamic, right? So let's say, for example, that we had, we'll use the sphere again. And I'm just going to go into object, quick effects, and we're just going to cell fracture it. So we're just going to fracture this object. We'll move our sphere out of the way. And so now, the same thing that we did before, we want to set one object as a rigid body. We want to set our deactivation to start deactivated and we want to make sure that we apply that 
to the other objects with copy from active. Well, now we want to take an object and we want to set it so that it's going to interact with the sphere. But in this case, we don't want to set it where it's an active object being affected by gravity. We want to set it as an object that we can use. So let's say, for example, we were to move this sphere over here and make it smaller. And notice that it's important that you apply your rotation and scale when you're doing things like this. Well, in this case, what we want to do is we want to take this sphere and we want to set it as a rigid body, but we want to set it as passive. But then we also want to check the box for animated. So when we check the box for animated, what that means is that means we now have an object that we can move around in our scene that's going to affect other things inside of our model. So now, if I was to click the play button, the sphere's not moving, right? So the sphere isn't moving until I move this object and I interact with it. So you now have something that's live that you can use in order to move those different parts and pieces around because we set it as active. So I can click play and we can just kind of smash it through our sphere in order to make it explode. All right, so leave a comment down below. Let me know what other videos using these features you'd like to see. Um, I'll link to a couple other related videos on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.